Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to show you how to create an as featured in logo bar on your Squarespace site. So there's not really an official name for these sections, but they're often promoting different things like it could be an as featured in section where you display logos of publications or magazines you've been featured in, or it could be logos of brands that you've worked with or really anything that applies to your business. The one thing these all have in common though is that there's a horizontal line of logos. So today I'm gonna to teach you the various ways you can create one of these on your Squarespace site, no matter which template or Squarespace version you are working from. So for example, I'm just on Jenna Kutcher's website and she has like a little logo feature bar here on her site. So it says you might have seen me on. So it's basically as seen in and a bunch of logos. And then as another example, we have this template here that we are gonna launch soon in our shop. And we've got a section where you can put a bunch of logos. So whatever works for your business, but essentially, as I said, they all have a line of logos. So let's jump in to how to design one of these on your Squarespace site. So the first thing that I recommend you do, no matter which way that you're actually going to apply this logo bar or no matter which version of Squarespace you're in, is make sure your logos are all of a similar size. This is just gonna help with every method that we use. So it's a really good practice to start with. So I just have four logos here that I've just pulled from the internet and you can see that they're all different sizes. And this is gonna be very common when you're using different people's logos. They're all gonna be different sizes. That's pretty standard. So if we can standardize the size of the actual image before we upload it, we're gonna get much more of a consistent look in that logo bar. So you can do this in any sort of design program. I would probably recommend Canva if you don't have anything else. And I can't tell you exactly what size you're gonna need. I'd probably just go with something standard and square. So I'm gonna create a design and I'm gonna go with Instagram post size, which is 1080 by 1080. That should work fine. And generally a square would be fine, unless for some reason you have all logos that are particularly horizontal or um, landscape ratio, then maybe you wanna do something more of a landscape size. You can play around with this a little bit, but as long as they're all put on the same canvas, it's gonna help a lot. So you can also see with my logos that they all have a gray background color. So your logos might have different background colors or they might be PNGs with transparent backgrounds. If you do have a variety, you will just have to go with what you've got. You know, some people don't provide the best logos or the most ideal background colors for what you want. And depending on the business, they might not want you to change the colors of the logo. So in this case, what I would do is I would make sure that the background for the logo bar on my website is the same gray color so that it matches all of the logos. If you have a variety of colors, just choose one color that will work or try to get your hands on PNGs, which have no background color at all, and then you can place them on any color. But just think twice before you try to change the colors of logos, because often that does go against the guidelines of using someone else's logo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these four logos into Canva. So I'm just gonna upload them and they're all gonna show up on my canvas. So I'll just delete them from here and you'll see they're over here in my uploaded photos. I've got four logos, so I'm gonna create four um, pages in Canva and then I'm just going to click or drag it in and then I'm gonna resize them. So it's gonna be different for everyone because everyone has a different ratio but I'm gonna resize them until they look relatively even. And I'm also gonna change the background color of these squares to this color here. And I'm gonna do that across all of them because we have the same background color. So now you can see the logos are all the same size. Obviously the actual logos are all different sizes, but the images are all now the same size square. If I just change my view in Canva, it gives us sort of a better look of what that might look like going across as the four logos on your logo bar. So it kind of gives us an example of what we might be looking at when it's on the website. So adding them all to this same size is just gonna make it a lot more consistent on your website. 
You could definitely try it and just use the original logo sizes, but you'll probably end up with logos that are much bigger than others. For example, if you set the width of all of your logos on your site to be a certain width, this one is gonna look a lot taller if it's trying to be the same width as this because this is wide and short and this is tall and skinny. So if you made them all the same width, this one would probably be huge and this one would look quite small. So now if they're all set to the same width, this is what they're gonna look like because they're all set on the same size canvas. Now feel free to adjust a little bit. I might make this one a little bit smaller just because obviously these are more landscapes so they're quite short. This one I've already made a little bit smaller and so I might just adjust this one a little bit and then just preview that again and that looks a little bit more consistent. So you can just adjust depending on how you want them to look. Okay, so now I have my four logos and these all do have a gray background color. I wasn't able to get any PNGs. So I'm gonna download them as flat JPEGs and I'm just gonna make sure I put them onto my site on a section that has the same background color as this. So I'm gonna click share, download. I'm gonna just download them as high quality JPEGs. Now I've downloaded them, you can see the difference here between the original logos. If I was following best practices, I would rename all of these logos first and just make sure that they're compressed. If you don't know anything about that, make sure to check out our video on how to optimize and compress your images for Squarespace and for search engine optimization. I won't go into it now because it requires its own video, but I'll definitely link that below. Okay, so now we've done that first step, we're gonna get into all of the different methods of how we can create this logo bar. So there's three main methods I'm gonna show you today. The first one is just creating a logo bar by just using standard image blocks. Now you can do this in Squarespace 7.1 and 7.0. So we'll dive into that first. Then the second option is going to be how to create a logo bar in Squarespace 7.1 with a gallery section. And the third is going to be how to create a logo bar in Squarespace 7.0 using a gallery block. So those last two are version specific, so they can only be used on Squarespace 7.0 or Squarespace 7.1, but one of those three options should cover you no matter which version or template you're using. Now, if you're not sure which version or template you're using, I've linked below an article, which is gonna give you some quick steps on how to find out which version you're using, which template you're using, because that obviously will influence the instructions today. And if you want to skip back and forth between the different instructions, this video is timestamped, so just skip ahead if you don't want to listen to this first version. So this is the most simple version possible in Squarespace 7.0 and Squarespace 7.1. I am in Squarespace 7.1 right now, so the editor does look a little bit different. For example, you don't have sections like this in Squarespace 7.0, but you can just do this directly onto your page, or if you're using index pages, you can create a new index section. But once you're on the page, things are pretty much the same. And we're just gonna create a simple logo block with image blocks. And we'll put a text block at the top. If you don't already have one on your page, you can do that by clicking the plus, add a block, and add a text block. I've already got one, so from there, I'm just gonna write something like as featured in. I'm going to center align it. And I'm just gonna change the font. From there, I'm gonna start adding some image blocks. So I'm gonna add an image block underneath the text block. And of course, I'm just gonna choose image and I'm gonna upload one of my logos. So you'll see this image is gigantic. And what we wanna do is actually add all of our logos side by side. So I'm gonna add another image block. I'm actually just gonna click out of it this time and I'm gonna click and drag the block. So if you hover over a block, you'll see that little hand symbol show up. This means you can click and drag and move it around. And I'm gonna move it to the right side of this image. So you'll see when you move your block around that you will see this blue line showing up. And this is essentially showing you where you're gonna drop the block. So if I just move it in a little bit, you'll see that blue line shrinks. And if I move it out a little bit, the blue line extends all the way down the section. So I just wanna make sure that I'm dragging the image only directly next to the image and not the whole way down the section. Otherwise it's gonna to go to the right side 
of the text and the image and I just want it to go to the right side of the image. So the line should be a short line that looks like it's really only attached to that side of the image like that. And I'm just going to release and you'll see the image is now directly next to the other image. And I'm going to do that same thing two more times. So you can add it anywhere. It doesn't matter. Just click the plus or add block and click image. And then you're going to drag it up to the right hand side of the next image. So just make sure that blue line is only connected to the image. And I'm going to do it one more time. And now you'll see we have four blocks side by side. So you'll probably have your images uneven like this. And we can actually adjust them by hovering over the intersection between two blocks and clicking and dragging. And this is going to adjust our images. Now there are a few issues with doing the logo bar this way. Because Squarespace has a specific grid, you can see that my four blocks are nice and evenly spread across the page. But if we tried to add five, we couldn't get them even. So this will work if you have three or four, but if you have five logos, it's gonna get a little bit tricky. So I'd recommend checking out another method if you do have more than four logos. So you can probably see where we're going here. I'm just going to finish up and add the rest of my logos. And you'll also notice instantly that you can see the white background and the gray background on the logos. So because they're all even, it doesn't actually look too bad on the white background because they're all perfectly square and they all match up. It actually doesn't look too bad, but I would probably change the background color of my page or my section to match. So something like this, that's obviously not perfect, but I would adjust it to match the logos. And there you have your logo section. Another potential problem when it comes to creating the logo bar with the image blocks is that when we adjust for mobile, the logos are pretty large because they stack individually. So if you want them to be quite big on mobile, then this is the way that you'd want to go. Otherwise, have a look at one of the other methods. Okay, I'm going to discard all of those changes and let's start again on the Squarespace 7.1 method of using a gallery section. So this is 7.1 only. If you click edit on your page, click to add a section, and then we're going to come down to the, to the left here and click on gallery. So you can see there's a bunch of different gallery layouts and you can use this as inspiration to create like a slideshow logo bar or even a logo bar that has different size logos. So it's more like a wall of images. But let's just go with the classic even grid today. So I'm going to click on the one on the top right. Okay, so we have our gallery section. And to replace the images, you just want to click on edit gallery. And you can go through and delete all of the demo content that they've put in there. And I'm going to upload my four logos. So you can just drag them all in at the same time. And then click close. And so you can see that your images are here. We're not seeing all of the images. So we do need to make some adjustments to this section. So click on the little pencil icon to edit the section. And we're going to play around with the settings. So this is where you can get really creative and adjust depending on one, the size of your logos that you're uploading, two, how many logos you have and what you want them to look like as well. So. We've just chosen the simple grid, which is what we chose at the beginning. But again, you can play around with the different types of galleries. You can change it to full bleed, which makes it go right to the edges or inset. You can change the aspect ratio. So we set our images up as one to one square, but you can play around with them here as well. So if we did want to adjust them a little bit, that's not going to work because it's cropping. Maybe four, three is quite good with our images. We can change the amount of columns. So we would want to put at least four here because we have four images. So if you have five or six images, this is where it's going to be a lot easier to adjust compared to that last method that we used. You can adjust the spacing. So this is going to help you decide how big you want those logos to be. I'm going to just choose mine to be nice and small. So I'm going to change the spacing and you can even toggle on and off captions. We didn't add any captions to our images, but if we were, 
would click on that little edit gallery image again and this is where your caption would be. So if I turn captions on now, you'll see that's just where I added that caption. So if you did want to add a little note for any reason, you can do so in there. You can add animations and you can even add a light box if you wanted to. So if you wanted the logos to be clickable and they'll open up in their own window. And then just like with any other section on 7.1, you can edit the colors. So I would change this to a gray to match the background of those logos. Now, the one thing you can't add to a gallery section is a title. So we can't have as featured in. But what I would do if you did want to use a gallery section is I'd just add another section above it. Type here as featured in. Center align it. And then in the section settings, I change the height to be about 10 and then change the background to match. And it's hard to tell that those are two different sections. Another option in 7.1, which is very similar to the gallery section is actually a list section. So I'm not going to go into too much detail of this because it's very similar to the gallery, but if you click add section and choose list, which is actually just above gallery, there's these list sections, which can include images, but they also can include a title at the top, a button down the bottom and blurbs under your text. So you could choose one of these as well if you wanted something similar. And if you scroll through, you can see a lots of different layout options and these might work better for you too, depending if you want some more text, but essentially it's the same thing. So you have the area where you add in the content and the images and the text, and then you can just play around with it just like we did with the gallery section. So if you can't quite get the gallery to exactly how you want it, make sure you check out lists as well, because there could be an option in here for you too. And for the galleries, if we have a look at it on mobile, you can see that this splits the images up into two across instead of one on top of the other. So this might actually be a better option for you on mobile. You can see how much less room this takes than the first option. Cool, so that is it for 7.1. Let's jump into the 7.0 option. So I have this 7.0 test site here and we're just gonna jump right in. We can click edit on any index section, any page header or any regular page. So basically anywhere you can add a block, you can use this method. So I'm gonna go all the way across the top here and click to add a gallery block. So you can see here it says gallery and this is similar to the gallery section, but in this case it's a block and at the moment it's only available on Squarespace 7.0. So I'm going to click and drag my images through and they're all going to upload here. You can rearrange them as well. And actually in any of the options you've looked at, you can rearrange all of the logos depending on where you want them to sit. So we've got them uploaded and then at the top here, you can see that there's a design tab. So, this is similar to what we were looking at before. It just looks totally different. The way it's laid out is different, but again, there's a few different options for design that we can play with. We'll just stick with the simple grid for now, but definitely play around with the other options. We can change the aspect ratio. So maybe to four, three, like we had looked at in the last gallery, which is quite good for our logo size. You can toggle on crop or toggle it off, which is a little bit confusing when you have the aspect ratio, but essentially it's just going to resize them to be a bit smaller if you have both set. Again, just play around with it. You can have the image title shown. So this is similar to what I showed you before in the last version. You can add like an image title and description. So if you click on the cog icon next to the logo, you can enter an image title here. Because we have that toggled on, you can see the image title is showing there. So if you did want a title, that's how you'd put it. I'm going to toggle that off. And here's where you can change the thumbnails per row. So again, this is really handy if, of course, depending on how many logos you have, and everyone's going to have a different amount of logos. So this goes all the way up to 10. You can have 10 across, which is quite a lot. So you can have nice small logos. And if you had more than 10 logos, they're just going to come down to the next line. So just play around. I'm going to go back to four because I only have four logos. You can change the padding around the images. Again, you can use the light box feature if you want to, or you can link the images and open them links in a new window. So if you did want to link them, you do that over in that settings area at the bottom here where it says click through URL. 
So that's a really nice, easy option. I'm just going to click apply. I'm going to delete these other random text blocks I have in this section. And of course we can add a text block at the top that says as featured in center it. And that's basically it. Now changing the background color for a page or section in Squarespace 7.0 definitely isn't as easy as Squarespace 7.1. And it might actually take a little bit of code depending on where you want to change it. So just be aware of that when you're putting in your logos. I think these look fine, nice and squared off with the gray background. Or you could choose a different background depending on what logo files you have. Or ideally you have those PNGs that have no background at all. But yeah, it really just depends on the background color of your website or your specific section. I do actually have two tutorials, one about how to add background colors to specific index sections and another about how to change the background colors of specific pages. So I'm going to link both of those down below. Those are both 7.0 specific tutorials. So if you really do want to change the background of a section or a page, individually. One of those posts can help you do that. So I'll definitely link those below this video. And we can also have a look at how this looks on mobile as well. So if you click the little arrow at the top and click the mobile, you'll see that again with the gallery block, it splits itself into two across instead of just a single column like the very first version that we looked at. So this might suit you better. So this behaves very similarly to the gallery section in 7.1. Cool, and that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. I hope you can create one of these for yourself. And you can see that I've shown you sort of the bare minimum options, but there are actually a lot of other layout designs you can play around with within those gallery blocks or within the list sections. So make sure you just experiment and figure out what's gonna work for you, depending on your logos and how you want them to look. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and otherwise I'll see you in the next one.